What's going on, guys? My name is Courtney, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to go from zero to 100K in funding in less than 90 days. And I honestly, when I made this video, this idea, <laughs> I didn't know why I was going to give all of this away for free. But you know what? Bug it. I'm for the people. So here we go. <laughs> all right. So this whole video I'm going to show you how to do is how to clean your credit yourself how to structure your credit profile correctly so you can get the maximum funding possible and also how to fund the banks in your area. It's going to give you that huge bag. OK, um, long story short, um, I used to also have trouble myself scaling businesses. I've done literally everything you can think of from Amazon to eBay to drop shipping to every entrepreneur route you can think of. I've done it <laughs> all right. And I've always ran into an issue to where I couldn't scale my business because I didn't have the necessary capital to do so. Um, long story short. Now I've been able to get myself over $153,000 in business funding to scale my businesses and they're all thriving. Okay. And I want to do the exact same thing for you. All right. So I know there's a lot of you guys that either want to start scale or just have a cushion for your business. I'm going to show you guys the exact blueprint in this video to do everything on your own if you wanted to. All right. I do want to dispel just a few different, you know, limiting beliefs that you guys may have. You may have worked with a credit repair company in the past that may have scammed you or just didn't get you any results, <laughs> which is sad. You know, we've all been there. And then lastly, also people maybe think that they can't get this funding because they don't have the necessary income to kind of show for it. Um, but I'm here to let you know today, I've dealt with all of these things myself. And like I said, I've got $153,000 in business funding without showing any documentation as well. Okay, so I'm gonna show you exact step-by-step -step process of how to do all of that. Um, here's a few testimonials. Um, I was also used to be a real estate agent as well. Like I said, I've done everything. Uh, one of my clients here, she had a terrible credit score. Now she's in the 700 plus and she's also living in her dream home. OK, she's sending me videos and pictures of her new shutters, blinds, everything that she's upgrading all the time. And it's so fulfilling to see an update from her every time she reaches out to me. So it's amazing. Um, all these other results here are all different entrepreneurs that were in the exact same position as you. And they wanted to either start, scale their business or just have a cushion to fall back on as well there's honestly just so many results that i can continue to just flood but like i said i want to keep this video short straight to the point and just deliver nothing but game in this video um so make sure you guys stay tuned at the end of this video i'm going to have a very great offer for you guys and it's going to help you guys a lot as well so definitely stay tuned for that other than that have a pen and a piece of paper and let's get into it all right, guys, we're not going to waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So this is the funding blueprint. So you can get up to 100K in funding or more. All right. So the step number one, you're going to make sure that your credit report is clean and there's no negative items. OK. In order to do that, you want to pull your credit report. In the description, I'm going to have a link to my it's going to be a special link. that's going to give you a one dollar for a seven day trial. And you're going to want to um, activate that so you can actually get your full report so you can start analyzing it. All right. Um, after you get your report, what you want to do is you want to freeze the big brothers. What are the big brothers? The big brothers are the secondary bureaus. OK, so anytime that we're disputing any information with the primary bureaus here, what they're going to do first is validate that with the secondary bureaus. So just to give them, you know, one more barrier of headache, you know, you, what you want to do is freeze the big brothers first. Um, the description within the description, I'm going to have the links to where you can go to the secondary bureaus and freeze your report. It's going to be the direct link so you can go ahead and get that knocked out. All right. Next thing we're going to want to do is actually analyze your report. So this is one of my clients here. I'm talking fast because I want to keep everything quick, straight to the point and just deliver the value as quick as possible. All right. So at the top, once you get your report, you're going to see your scores here um, your names here. Um, I'm going to be blurring her personal information out. But just to give you a heads up, like her name on this one is differently um, is typed out differently here than the, than the next two. And then all of her addresses are completely different. And this is going to be great for us because the personal information is one of the reasons that we kind of can get out of a lot of different things that's negative on our report. The next thing you know here is the summary. So ideally, you want to have at least eight accounts minimum on your actual credit report before you start going for funding. Uh, she has six, seven, seven. So um, this like she's right there. I mean, if all of these accounts were positive, at least that would be good. Um, but I'm already knowing some of them aren't. That's why her credit score isn't the best right now. But it's OK. We're getting her there. Um, but next thing you want to look at is the balances. So this is her balance across all of her credit cards here. And the next thing you know is her payments. So this is her average monthly payment with that balance. OK. 
Uh, next thing I want to note is the inquiries. All right. So you want to have less than four inquiries on every bureau at any given time. That's another data point that we want to hit before we go for funding. As you can see, she has three here, seven and six. So we're going to have to wipe off all those inquiries as well. OK, I'm going to have the letter templates that we're going to go over as well, which is we're going to challenge those there. OK, so this is her first card. Uh, she just has you can see the history here. She just has one late payment. That's the only thing that's keeping this account negative. So instead of going to delete this whole account, don't do that. You want to start by going for the late payments first because this has good history. You know, this car was this car was purchased or not purchased. This car was added to our account back in September of 2022. So we want to make sure that we can keep that good age because age is another factor in your credit score. All right. Um, so we're going to the next one. This is good. And this one. OK, so anytime you see CO, that means that this is collection or a charge off. And with that, we want to make sure we just go ahead and strike this whole account. We want to get this taken off completely. All right. This one has amazing history. We want to keep this one. Next one. OK, so this one also has pretty good history as well. Um, I'm getting a phone call. All right. It's the auto loan. Amazing history as well. We want to keep that. So I think I already went over this one, but this one has good history as well. Um, no late payments, so we're going to keep that one. All right, and the next thing you know, we see all of the inquiries that she had on her account. Okay, so this is what we're going to target. Okay, so after we got our report, we analyzed the report and noted down the items that we need to dispute. And then we've also froze the big brothers. Now it's time to use consumer law to get those deletions. Okay, so consumer law. So there's going to be two different letters that we're going to be using to dispute all these negative items on your report. The late payments, we're going to use a whole different template. So I'm going to have the link to that in the description so you can use that for your late payments. But for everything else, this is the one we're going to use right here, permissible purpose. OK, so this is the consumer law here, 15 USC 1681 B. That's what we're going to be using for all of the negative items. All right. Um, up here, I attached all of the different addresses you need to be sending this to. You want to make sure that when you're sending it to TransUnion, for example, you want to delete these other two. OK, so you want to delete that there. And then also here, you want to take that out as well when you're sending it to TransUnion. And then same thing with the other ones. OK, so when you go to Experian, you delete Equifax and TransUnion as well. All right. Same thing there. OK, so this is what you're going to be using. You're going to input all of the negative items that you have on your report right here, except for the late payments. That's, like I said, it's going to be in the next one. Um, we're going to do that. All right. I do want to show you, though, this is important. You want to also make sure you include a copy of your ID. Um, this could be either your driver's license, your ID or your passport. Either either one of those that works. Um, next thing is your Social Security number. You want to include a picture of that on there as well. And then lastly, you want to provide a proof of address. OK, so you can use that could be a utility bill, water bill, phone, car insurance, bank statement, whatever. OK, you can even use your cash app statement. You just want to take a screenshot and upload that to the file here. That's what you want to do. OK. All right. Perfect. So once you send those off to the different bureaus, you want to do that every 30 days. OK, so after you get everything knocked off, we're going to move over to the next step. All right. So this is how you become an ideal client and how you actually structure your credit profile correctly for business funding. All right. So this is what you want your profile to look like. No late payments. Um, the way the ways that you can avoid having late payments on your report is you can go ahead and set the auto pay. I always recommend that. And also you want to know your statement date. Your statement date is actually when everything reports to the bureaus. It's important that you know these dates so you can stay on top of everything. All right. After that, the next data point you want to hit is to make sure that the average age of all your credit cards is over four years old. OK, this is very important. So if that isn't the case, what you want to do is either borrow, buy or do it organically. OK, what I mean by borrow, let's just say you have an aunt or even your parents who say they have great credit. They have a nice credit card and they can add you to that credit card. You want, you want to make sure they don't have any late payments or anything like that, because that will reflect, too. Um, but you want to make sure that it has like an amazing credit card, has great age, um, a great limit and low utilization and no late payments. So if they have that and they meet that criteria, that's perfect. They can add you as an authorized user on that card and that will automatically boost the average of your age up, depending on how long. Um, they've had that card for. OK, so that would be you borrowing age. Next, we have buy. So with the buy option, you can go to tradelinesupply.com and you can essentially pay someone to do that for you that you don't know. So if you don't know anyone that can do that for you, you can pay someone else to do it uh, with tradelinesupply.com or you can reach out to me and I can give you like wholesale prices instead of having to get taxed by Tradeline Supply. 
either or, I do not care. I'm just make sure you meet this data point, okay? Um, the next thing is organically. So if you're like pretty much right at that threshold, you could just wait, you know, an extra two to three years for you to be over that threshold. So you'll meet that data point. Completely up to you, depending on how soon you want this money. Um, next, we want no collections. So like I said, we want zero negative items. That's how you're gonna get this big bag um, by following all of these data points here. Um, less than four inquiries at any given time. We spoke about that earlier. And I showed you an example where you can find that. You wanna make sure that you have less than four. Very important. All right, and over 80 accounts. We talked about this earlier as well. Um, if you, for some reason, don't have that many positive accounts, you can go to Self, um, Rental Karma, Credit Strong, or Kickoff. These are all amazing. You can add those to your profile. Yes, they're gonna be brand new to your account. It's gonna bring your average down, uh, but you adding the um, trade lines to your account, it's gonna boost that average up. But you wanna make sure that you have eight positive accounts on your profile before you go for funding. The next data point is having your utilization low. Um, you want to have it below 10 percent credit karma always tries to push this 30 percent is fine no if you want to get the biggest bag possible you want to be under 10 percent very important and the last thing i want to talk about is developing relationships with the banks that you're going to pull from okay so um, let's just say that you are wills fargo for some reason i'm coming to you and i want to get funding by me being a loyal customer and having a solid relationship built with you you know that shows that, like I just said, you're, I'm a loyal customer to you, meaning that you're more likely to give me more money because I am loyal to you and I utilize you in multiple different ways. So what I mean by that is um, with four or five different banks, you wanna have solid relationships with them. And in order to do that, you wanna have different accounts. So I wanna have different products with you. I wanna have a checking account, savings account. I also want a merchant account for my business. And also let's just say, you know, any other accounts that you wanna establish with them, the more products, the better. Okay, so I want to have those accounts with you and I want to at least have $100 in each of those accounts. All right. Okay, so this is my most exciting and favorite part to talk about right here. This is when you're really going to lock in that bag. Okay, so the fastest way to get max funding is to do a strategy called double dipping. Um, the main thing you need to understand is that different banks pull from different bureaus. All right. So anytime you go to get money from a bank, they're going to do a hard inquiry on your file. However, that hard inquiry isn't going to go to every bureau. It's going to go to different bureaus, depending on which bank you go to. OK, so by you understanding this, you can create a, spe a special sequence for yourself to where you can go all in one day and apply for these high limit zero interest credit cards with all of these different banks at the same exact time. And since they are pulling from different credit bureaus, they're not going to know that, hey, he's getting money over here, too. He's getting money over here, too. They're not going to know it because you're doing it all at the same time. And it's all pulling from different bureaus. This is the sauce right here. <laughs> okay. Um, it's very important though, um, because different areas, like you may watch a YouTube video or look up um, which credit bureau does this bank pull from, you know, and it may be somebody putting that, you know, give you that information. They live in California, right? So if you live in a different state, it's gonna be, it could be different for you. So what you want to do is you want to put in that footwork. You want to call yourself, call these banks and see what credit bureaus they pull from. All right. And by you doing this, those are the banks you want to establish those relationships with so that when you are ready to go get funding, you have a perfect sequence of which banks you want to hit. OK, so that's what that is here. Another thing is, too, once you get that money, you can remove those hard inquiries using that step one that we um, taught you earlier. And with that, <laughs> you can run this plate over and over again. I'm giving you all the sauce right here. OK, over and over again. All right, so this is one of the last steps that you need to make sure that you're hitting in order to get this max funding, all right? So it's very important. We wanna set up your LLC the proper way. You want your LLC to look just as good on paper as like a Walmart, a Costco, a 7-Eleven, any of those, okay? So you wanna make sure you have all of these things in line right here. Number one, a low risk name. So I know a lot of you guys wanna go into like trucking, real estate, whatever industry you wanna go in, you wanna make sure you're not using a high risk industry name because all of those are high risk, okay? So let's just say that I have a trucking business and I have trucking in my LLC name and I'm coming to you and I'm saying, hey, you know, I have this business or I wanna start a trucking business and I wanna get $100,000 from you. And you know that 90% of trucking businesses fail. Are you more inclined to give me a, a bag or no? <laughs> no, you're not just because of that. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your um, business name low risk and low profile, okay? And you wanna make it something broad. 
let's just say like solutions, ventures, holdings, or consulting, management, something like that, okay? Next thing you wanna do is have a 1-800 number. Very important. You don't wanna have no local number, your phone number, none of that. You don't want that on your business information, okay? Next thing is your business domain. You want that to be professional. Business email, do not use your Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook, none of that. You want it to look just as good on paper. Like I said, um, number five is the business address. So you don't want to use your home address. You don't want to use a virtual mailbox that's links to like a Staples or a PO box. You don't want to use any of those things because when they look up your information, they're going to look up and see like on Google Maps, okay, this address is linked to this home address. <laughs> it's going to look funny when they look up your address and they're seeing how much money you're asking for and you're operating this out of your home. <laughs> you don't want to set it up that way. You want to go out and get a virtual address that's linked to a brick and mortar building. It looks like it actually runs something, okay? Next is your EIN. Your EIN is technically just your social for your business, okay? So this is how all the banks keep up with your information with your LLC. After that, we have our articles. This is short for articles of organization, which is essentially just a form that you get when your LLC is registered. And then the very last thing is we want to list your LLC with the 411. All right. So this is basically just the new age yellow book. All right. If you don't know what the yellow book is, <laughs> it's okay. Just make sure you register with the 411. And now after you've got all of that done, you are now ready for max funding. All right. So let's go ahead and run through it just one last time just to make sure you've got everything. You have no negative items on your report. You meet, you've met all of these data points that we've talked about here. You've called all the local banks in your area that you have and you've built those relationships. You've also formulated that perfect sequence so that you can hit all of these banks by double dipping and getting max funding. And then lastly, you've made sure that your LLC is properly formatted. All right. And with that being the case, you have that max funding. You know, you go ahead and apply. You got it. All right. It's been all the game right here. All right, guys. So the absolute last thing I want to talk about here is my business here, Passion Credit. What we do is help everybody that we work with get to a 700 credit score and get up to $100,000 in funding to start their business, to scale their business, or just to have a cushion to fall back on. All right. So there's two options with all the information that we've given you today. Um, number one, you can take all of this information, apply it, and you can risk maybe possibly messing it up and getting denied by these banks, depending on how you go about it. Or two, it's a done with you program. We can help you, we can coach you, get up to that 100K with all the steps that we provided. We can hold your hand throughout the process just to ensure that you get that bag and don't have to restart, get those hard increases on your file and start all the way from zero again. All right, so once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I gave you all the game here that you need. And if you guys do want the extra help, go ahead and schedule a call below or you can reach out to me in the DMs on Instagram, and I would love to help you out. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Y'all have a great one.